Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studio. Today we'll be talking about this Aghman peace process. As we know that the government in the United States of America has changed now. Mr. Joe Biden is the person in charge along with his very close allies. Whether you talk about um, the Defense Secretary, General uh, Austin Lloyd, or you talk about uh, the Secretary of State, or you talk about uh, the new National Security Advisor. Now the interesting part is that obviously we were thinking and we were planning that things would change. There is going to be a rapid, rather a quick response to what earlier was done by uh, Donald Trump. But interestingly, things have changed. So today we'll be talking about uh, the United States intention to review February 2020 US Taliban agreement, including to assess whether the Taliban was living up to its commitments to cut ties with the terrorist groups, to reduce violence in Afghanistan and to engage in meaningful negotiations with the Afghan government and other stakeholders. This was stated by Mr. Jake Sullivan, the new security advisor of the United States of America. And this report was also published in uh, Al Jazeera television as well as Times of India. Uh, second card tells us that we want to end this so-called forever war. We want to bring our forces home. We want to retain some capacity to deal with the with any sort of um, resurgence or terrorism which is what uh, brought us there in the first place nominee for secretary of state antony blinken now he's the another very important person in the new administration it further adds that we have uh, re-arrested 600 of the freed individuals because they were fighting alongside the taliban despite pledges that they would not rejoin the battlefield now this was something very important uh, and we will definitely talk about it. And this was stated by the Afghanistan's National Security Advisor, Hamdullah Mohib. And uh, as far as Pakistani response is concerned, the uh, Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi says that I think they, referring to the Biden's administration, should realize there is an opportunity in Afghanistan and they should uh, preserve uh, with what was initiated and was not and will not reverse things. Now, a, a lot of debate is going on in the uh, current administration. They believe that there are a couple of points. Number one is about the human rights, whether you talk about the rights of the minorities or the women, especially about their education and health and so on and so forth. Then there is another one regarding uh, the recapture of certain number of uh, Afghan Taliban. They were released earlier, but they were told not to fight alongside the uh, ranks of the uh, Taliban of Afghanistan. Then another one was about uh, that they should um, uh, distance themselves from the other terrorist groups. That was again something really important. And then what sort of an agenda will they follow? What sort of a government will be formed? What sort of an exercise will be done? And again, what do all the parties want? And how to make sure that everybody is happy after receiving their own uh, pie? The point is now that there are a lot of stakeholders and then the actual story tells us that by the mid of 2021 there should be all the forces uh, should be withdrawn and there should be no foreign troops as far as Afghanistan is concerned and especially on their uh, side. Now this is something this equation is pretty interesting it's not uh, that easy to solve a lot of things will change a lot of people believe that maybe Donald Trump was doing uh, or rather taking few steps in a hurry and now this administration is going to monitor and would look into the details and they will formulate a strategy. But most likely now it is again believed that there isn't going to be a bigger change. So talk about this, we have with us in our studio Dr. Talat Shabir Sab. He's an expert on uh, South um, Asia. Dr. Sab, thank you so much for your time, sir. And uh, we'll also be talking to Parvez Jamil Mir Sab. He's a senior journalist. He'll be joining us on uh, Skype and uh, we have uh, thank you very much, sir, for your time, Parvez Saab, and we'll be also talking to Muhammad Khalid Khatak Saab, former ambassador, and he's going to join us on the uh, telephone. So first question to you, Dr. Talat Shabir Saab. The last thing first. I was reading a couple of articles and what I got to know that the current uh, Joe Biden's administration, whether you talk about the Secretary of State, you talk about the Secretary of Defense or National Security Advisor, the three most important posts, they all believe that uh, first of all, nothing should be done in haste. They should evaluate the options and then take a decision. But at the same time, a lot of people believe that uh, Joe Biden's team doesn't have much to maneuver 
and they do not have much to change either. So within the given parameters, they will have to take a decision. Your take, let's start off from there. Yeah, right. uh, I think uh, this is very important uh, at the moment when Joe Biden has taken over as uh, American president. And uh, we see the situation in Afghanistan still very precarious as it, it was before him. Now, the first problem of Joe Biden administration is that they wish to look different from Trump's administration. So uh, when they say they, they are likely to, they are likely to, they are going to review these, uh, the deal with Taliban, I think, uh, the, in my assessment, this is going to be only a cosmetic step. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I don't think so that they have much to, as you said very rightly, that they have much to uh, maneuver. For, for instance, if I ask myself, what are the options with them other than, uh, you know, not uh, mm -hmm. going on, going ahead with the peace process, they have already decided. So I think they have no, uh, no option also. So they have to go to the, to the, to the peace process. And, you know, uh, since as I always say, Afghan peace process, our situation in Afghanistan is very complex situation. It's not a very easy, you know, easy to resolve. So Biden administration will have a lot of problems. Yes, of course, Biden administration is different from Trump in a way that uh, Biden knows this region very well. He, he knows Pakistan very well. He was very instrumental uh, in, you know, getting this Kerry Lugar bill uh, aid to Pakistan. Uh, his uh, vice president also knows uh, this region very well. So they will have advantage. But uh, coming, coming down to, you know, reviewing the situation in Afghanistan is, I think, very difficult. And uh, I don't think so. They have many options also to uh, look to when, uh, you know, thinking of uh, Afghanistan one. Secondly, if you, if you look at the situation in Afghanistan, now uh, as uh, the National Security Advisor of Afghanistan says, he is re-arresting some of the uh, disgruntled of, of Taliban yes. who have joined hands with the militants. So, uh, and uh, likewise, in the last uh, episode with you, I, I, I uh, said that there's a lot of difference between thinking of approach of uh, those who are uh, actually uh, carrying out talks with with the uh, Americans or uh, other stakeholders, and those who are uh, or working on ground, there is a difference of uh, opinion between the commanders in the field and people who are negotiating peace. Uh, they have a different uh, approach to peace uh, peace in Afghanistan. So situation is very complex. But mm -hmm. I think Biden administration, like I think till May this year, <coughs> they they are not uh, likely to change guards in Afghanistan. Like uh, it is expected that they'll keep uh, Khalil Zad there because he is uh, chief negotiator, and I think uh, they won't change their commander in the battlefield. They will continue to, uh, you know, uh, stick with him, and because he knows he and he is pushing the peace process. But if you expect anything very, you know, drastic from Taliban, or you expect anything drastic happening in Afghanistan, I think it is not going to happen, and things will continue the way they are uh, they are going. And uh, so I this think peace process is going to slow down. Uh, or linger to, to on, or perhaps it, it there will. could be delays? Uh, I think uh, till May, uh, Biden administration will observe also. This review doesn't mean that they are going to, to change, change everything. I think review means, also means that they would see uh, as if what options they have uh, with regards to, like Biden has been a uh, strong proponent of keeping very limited for, force in, the, in, in Afghanistan. They are for withdrawal from, uh, but at the same time, they want some capacity, some military capacity inside Afghanistan to probably deal with the, with the kind of presence they want to keep in Afghanistan or to... Now, the uh, question is, will that be acceptable to the Taliban? Yeah, but that's... And, and the time framework is again going to be very, very important. Yes, it is. It is. Because the first, uh, you know, as you, you said, uh, they have uh, May, May this year, a deadline. They have to leave uh, Afghanistan. Yeah. So, so it's very difficult as to whether um, uh, Biden will be able to get what they want, or uh, they they will, uh, they can they can do that kind of withdrawal from Afghanistan, mm -hmm. or Taliban will agree to what they think. Mm -hmm. Situation is very complex. All right. Let me go to uh, Parvez uh, Jamil Mirzab now. Mirzab, another important aspect is so far the negotiations were pretty smooth. There were issues regarding the women rights and the minority rights, and then again uh, the Taliban who were released, they eventually ended up, uh, Mirsa, joining the, uh, you know, uh, the other uh, splinter groups of the Taliban 
and a lot of fighting was taking place. Now the primary um, area of concern was number one, to bring down the violence or, or go, for an, go for a ceasefire option which wasn't acceptable with the Taliban. They could hit when and where they wanted and this is what they have done. So they were talking from a position of strength. Do you believe now that position of strength is going to get eroded at some stage because there is a new administration? PJ Mirsa. Well, first of all, let's get one thing clear. When the United States speaks about human rights, well, it should open its eyes and look towards Kashmir. It should look up in, inside what's happening in the United States, one. Two, when we speak about in, uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, these, I mean, the previous governments have always played Pakistan for their own ends and not for Pakistan's interests. This war, which we have come out of, well, that wasn't our war, but we had to make it our war for our own self-defense. I do remember uh, Sir David Richards, who was the commander of the NATO forces. Uh, there was a meeting in London um, with General Musharraf, and uh, uh, General Musharraf asked me to put a question. And I said, General, are you interested in withdrawing from uh, Afghanistan? Well, he said, personally, I'm not. I'm at odd, uh, at odd ends with the hierarchy, because I know if we withdraw, they'll reinforce, regroup, and come back because they're a warring faction. And we've suffered uh, during the times of the Raj. So he says, we know the mentality too well. But now the British, the NATO forces, and of course, the commander in chief, the United States of America, they're not on one page. And this is a basic problem which emanates and which engulfs us and Afghanistan. America has to play a stabilizing role with us as what the foreign minister has uh, just recently issued a statement. Look, they've got to come on table on equal terms. They cannot be dictating us as and when, if we don't come up to it, as in 2018, they stopped security assistance. Before that, you know what happened. So now what we need to do is, this is a new government. And this prime minister, for the first time in history, I think he's taking them on head on. And that is a key factor in re-establishing and re-normalizing the relations between Pakistan and the United States. The United States has always used, used us as, as somebody, you know, who plays a game in their power structures. Well, that time is no more. There's China now emerged, there's Russia emerging, and of course, the Eastern, global, uh, the Eastern bloc is now even seriously thinking of getting rid of the dollar and using their own currency. Now, these are major factors which the U.S. has to really take into consideration. Trump was always playing in the last four years as, or so as an isolationist. He's, got, you know, he totally isolated himself. It was America first and nothing else. And this is where Biden comes in and he tries to regularize and normalize relations with not with Pakistan, with the entire world. So I think Biden has a lot to catch up on. And of course, at the same time, what we need to see is that the stabilizing factor of the Afghan issue between Pakistan, America, that trust deficit has to be removed because we don't have any trust between, uh, in fact, the three of us. And I do remember, Faisal, in the Senate, I put a, a, a question to uh, Luger, uh, beg your pardon, John Kerry. I said, is there a trust deficit between the three? And Karzai immediately you know, jumped and he said, yes, that is a very good question. Yes, we have a trust deficit. So that thing is embedded in the minds of Pakistanis, Americans, and of the Afghans. Now, here we've got to come up on, on some stable, a table, like, uh, you know, expanding the Doha uh, summit, expanding the Doha spirit. And as long as we continue on those lines, yes, there is a glimmer of hope. And as far as uh, leaving the forces, they will leave the forces. There is no way that they'll, uh, uh, you know, sort of evacuate because they have to watch their own interests. They feel that somebody's behind them. Now, who? All right. Only they know. But all right, Mirza, I'll get back to you on that also because uh, it seems to be a complex issue at one end, and at the same time, it seems that it it can be resolved. I mean, there has to be will. There has to be proper determination, and and all the stakeholders should you know should feel satisfied that whatever the outcome is going to be, uh, they'll get their own share. Now, moving on to Ambassador Khalid Khatak Saab, I really want you to comment on, on, on certain very important areas. For example, the day uh, Donald Trump took charge, I remember 
so many people resigned so many people were not able to work with him look at the number of secretary of states who resigned and they were changed or the secretary of defense and even national security advisor i can't even remember who was the last one it was john bolton and so and so on but the mark esper and then mike pompeo how different do you think the american strategy would be because when it when it comes to donald trump whatever he was fed he was taking decisions and few decisions on his own now a, a very seasoned politician with a very seasoned uh, i would say vice president who knows the area very well Kamala Harris and along with the new team of General Austin Lloyd um, you talk about uh, Jake Sullivan or for that matter Mr Blinken do you think they would be able to you know come out with some sort of an out of box solution or maybe perhaps uh, could bring down the level of violence or s sort of you know make sure that there has to be some sort of an understanding between all the parties especially the Taliban and the current government because the nsa of uh, afghanistan, uh, afghanistan says that we have picked up almost 600 people who were released al earlier and if you remember this was the actual issue was the actual bone of contention between the government and the taliban negotiators your talk uh, your take sir well for a, personally i think you see that uh, afghanistan will remain central to pakistan us relations uh, because this is of strategic importance to both the countries to for the americans also and for pakistanis also uh, minus this issue uh, think of it uh, what is so common between the us and pakistan in terms of trade or in terms of attitudes or in terms of uh, you know other issues like middle east like uh, you know relations with china or you know or improvement of relations with uh, uh, Russia. So, you know, the Afghanistan remains central. You know, and in Afghanistan, I don't think you see that the peace is going to come that easily and that early. Uh, look, uh, in those people who know Afghanistan know that Afghanistan is a, a fragmented country, a fragmented society. You don't have just Taliban and government. You have got these warlords also. You have got ethnic contradictions also, and you have the contradictions between the expatriate Afghans, you know, who come, you see, and serve for a while and then go back. You see, there are hundreds and thousands of Afghans who are dual citizens also, and they are, frankly speaking, that uh, in most cases they've think, you see, that it's safer to, you see, have a home outside of Afghanistan than inside of Afghanistan. So, you know, no comment on their patriotism or anything, you see, but a uh, human thing, you know. So, you know, all these factors, and then you have, you see, Iran, uh, which will not be very comfortable with very stable Afghanistan, and India, which would like instability in Afghanistan, because that instability would spill over into uh, Pakistan, you know, and so, you know, these are factors, you see, the, and the Arab factor also, you know, the Arab Iranian, you know, problems, you know. So, Doha Talks was a very sort of uh, ambitious initiative, and uh, it worked only to the extent that it uh, made it uh, possible for the Taliban to come to the you know, uh, dialogue table, and also, you see, for the Afghan government to recognize indirectly Taliban as a party, you know, to the issue, to the dispute. And it helped in legitimizing Taliban as a party in Afghanistan. So, but what happens next, or what happens after that, has yet to be seen. And when it comes to Biden administration, uh, personally, I think you see that Biden is a mild man, and uh, he has been senator, you see, for uh, decades, and there's nothing, you see, to write home about it, you know, in the sense that he, there's nothing outstanding about him. Uh, and uh, his vice president, you know, uh, she's not like Dick Cheney, you know. Uh, let's be very frank about it. You see that Dick Cheney, who used to contribute so much to the uh, 
foreign and security policy is the uh, together with the uh, Rumsfeld or something. So, you know, just Kamala, you know, Harrison is, uh, cannot be Dick Cheney or something of a sort, you see. So it's going to be some kind of a collegiate, you know, decisions in which the Secretary of State will matter, uh, Secretary of Defense will matter, Pentagon will matter, you know. And, you know, unlike, you know, the previous era where the Trump, you see, used to make the final decision and uh, blood decision, sometimes wrong, sometimes right, you see, but uh, decision with impact, with effect. So Biden is not likely to be that effective, you know, when it comes to, you see, for politics. Or maybe that is better for the U.S., that he is less hyper, more sober, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the challenges that he faces are also too many. Today, it is just United States of America. It's no longer United States of America. And, you know, 200 years of its history has shown that it hasn't been able to overcome you see, the ethnic Russian issue. And, in fact, the attack on the parliament put a huge question mark against democracies also. Or, or we, uh, Harik Saab, I'll, I'll get back to that, but let me let me put another question here to the gentleman in our studio. Rok Saab, a couple of points. Now, when we when we hear the uh, foreign minister of Pakistan, Shah Mohammad Qureshi Saab, he says that uh, we want that the Biden administration should not uh, reverse, reverse their decision regarding Afghanistan, and they should preserve whatever has been done in 2020, in February, and about a year ago, and that that is the best way forward, the Doha Accord and all. At the same time, the American administration really believed that Zalmay Khalilzad should be the chief negotiator because he's, I mean, look at his homework, look at the kind of time he spent there and the engagement he had with, with the rest of the stakeholders. Our chief of army staff says that peace in Afghanistan means peace in Pakistan. The point is that if peace is there in Afghanistan, it, it is not going to suit India in any way. And now you, let's talk about the hostile actors. Let's talk about the <laughs> dirty players, because I think the role of the Indians was minimized. Don't you think they would like to get that role back, A? And secondly, when you talk about Joe Biden, sir, and look at his executive orders, whether you, you, he talked about the wall or the uh, uh, Paris climate issue, or he talked about so many other decisions regarding COVID and so on and so forth, this particular issue of the foreign policy seemed to be at the back burner. Right. When uh, our foreign minister says uh, the U.S. administration should not reverse the process, so he's right because, in a, in a sense, in a way that, you know, you have not reached here in, a, in moments. You have taken a lot of time. You have actually traversed a lot of journey, long journey to come to the point where now you find, though it is still fragmented, as the ambassador sub has mentioned, situation is volatile. There are still frictions. But you have reached here after a very long time, after a lot of effort has been put in. So reversing the process of peace in Afghanistan means that you are actually multiplying everything with zero. And uh, give, given that you have no other viable option also at the moment uh, visible to you. Uh, with regards to uh, Foreign Minister's statement, and uh, when we talk of uh, the Khalil Zad staying, staying as chief negotiator, I, I agree, he has done a lot of homework, he has done a lot of effort in bringing this uh, peace process to, to where it is today. Like, I always talk that when there are peacemakers, there are, you know, spoilers of peace also. So, f for sure, Indian uh, peace in Afghanistan in, is not in India's interest. Because if peace in Afghanistan means peace in, on the western border of Pakistan, which is, which is counterproductive to what India actually plans to do and has been working all along uh, uh, post 9-11. So uh, I think spoiler, this, the, the reversing of the situation, reversing of peace process or reviewing of peace process for the, uh, you know, and uh, trying to denting of peace process in Afghanistan would definitely serve India's interest in Afghanistan which Pakistan definitely wouldn't like to, uh, to happen. Now, 
I think there, sh there should be a sense prevailing, and I think the, the American Administration too knows that if you reverse the process, it is likely to complex decision more than what it is now. It's not very easy. As I always say, it's a very complex situation in Afghanistan, and, it's, uh, and there's no easy solution to these, these problems. Uh, I uh, strongly believe that um, given Joe Biden's experience as um, long experience as a uh, politician in uh, U.S. Uh, par uh, parliamentary politics, uh, US, U.S. politics, he understands the situation in Afghanistan is volatile and there's no quick fix for this solution. So I think uh, they will definitely review the process, but they are going to stick to what, what has happened. And of course, as I have said, they would try to do some some kind some somewhat different to what Trump has been doing. And what could and be that? A, uh, like they would say they will take the situation. You know, very they won't be very aggressive. They would uh, engage with the uh, stakeholders. They won't be aggressive, <clears throat> but you know the point is that again, two important areas. Uh, forget about what the demand of the Americans is, whether they talk about the human rights or not. But primarily to reduce uh, the violence, reduction in violence in Afghanistan. And secondly, the most important is that uh, to disengage uh, the Taliban or, or their groups from the non-state actors, because it seems that uh, Daesh or ISIS or so many other uh, factions, they are gaining strength by each and every passing day. And the point is, again, who is feeding them, who is financing them, who is training them, who is providing them the weapons to fight, and who is trying to, you know, sort of, uh, again, malign Pakistan. So that means that uh, all those factions present inside Afghanistan, they, they have their own mind. They have their own way of pursuing things for that matter. Let me take the same point to PJ Mir Sahib. Mir Sahib, now a couple of points. One is about the current understanding. Because if you remember, even in those times when this accord was being signed and reviewed in Doha, Hamid, uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, the current uh, president, um, uh, was not at all um, happy with it and especially regarding the exchange of prisoners initially he said well we are not uh, exchanging any prisoners later on it happened but that was again the bone of contention as I earlier mentioned now what particular areas you think could be the triggering factor for either a delayed process or a confused process let me put it this way sir well, first of all, you know, when we speak of the United States, we are the largest exporters in the world for them. And they are the biggest foreign direct investors in Pakistan. One. Now, that is our economic and trade relationship. Afghanistan. Now, in the last visit I had uh, with uh, Prime Minister Gilani, their only bone of contention was that they should be given more concessions. But then Pakistan had reservations that, uh, you know, we need to be checking your, uh, you know, goods, whatever they're going in, because there could be arms and munitions. Now, as long as we, I think, give this concession proviso with the right scrutiny, I think the Afghans will be very happy with it, because this is the land route coming all the way from Karachi onto Peshawar. We need to be easing off uh, their uh, transportation because their goods get perished and they get totally volatile you know, as far as business is concerned. So we need to give them that access. We've got to start rebuilding our relations with Afghanistan. Then they have this uh, issue of, uh, you know, fencing. Well, we can't go back on that because that is one of the reasons that we have had uh, this, uh, you know, cross-border terrorism gone to a minimum. And that is, of course, right. under the National Action Plan. Now, these are some of the factors which we need to be engaging ourselves in. And on top of that, when we always start a di dialogue uh, with, uh, about Afghanistan, Iran, or anywhere else, well, India pops in. Why does India pop in? Because India has got a very strong uh, PR system in the United States, in Washington in particular. We don't have any strong lobbyists. We need to get strong lobbyists. We need to get uh, you know, uh, 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 centers out there who can actually uh, you know, get Pakistan's case across. We don't have that. Whatever we do, Faisal, we do it on our national television. We do it in Pakistan. But our viewpoint doesn't get across. If it did get across, then there I would totally be some, some sort of, a, you know, and, 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 and th th there would be some sort of, a, you know, reaction. I mean, here in, 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 in Europe, a little bird gets missing, a, a young child gets missing, and the entire media takes it over. Yet, you know, 
helpless people die on a daily basis in Kashmir and the world doesn't blink an eye and not, not even the Uma, which we call the Uma. So we need to re-strategize ourselves. We need to revisit our foreign policy and our basic foreign policy is the same as what, what Mr. Jinnah gave us. Peace, tranquility, love and consideration in the region. Now, that can only come as long as we, I think, have a very strong uh, lobbying internationally. All right. Now, uh, Ambassador Saab, a couple of uh, more points. I mean, unfortunately, post-2001, we, we had to be a part of this huge campaign against the Afghan government, and we were the non-NATO allies, and, um, uh, you know, there was a new government in Pakistan. And interestingly, the Americans, they really pushed us hard also. Things we shouldn't have done, we had to do. Negotiations we could have taken, uh, you know, uh, I mean, or, or the kind of, uh, uh, I would say, the, uh, when you talk about the negotiations and you talk about the balance, I think it went totally in the Americans' favor, not in ours as well, because they expected us to, in fact, you know, renegotiate a certain level, which we didn't. But anyway, to cut the long story short, now, that was the time that after that, Pakistan was always looked upon from the Afghan prism. We were always told to do more. We were always told to go after the Harkani network and whatever we did was never appreciated. We were always pushed, pushed and pushed and eventually that strategic uh, relationship or the partnership got converted into this so-called uh, transactional in which Joe Biden doesn't believe because he's openly admitted that what kind of a tr uh, relationship is this. And it got deteriorated. It got eroded slowly but surely and eventually this is what has happened. Uh, then came uh, the uh, 45th president, Mr. Donald Trump. And look at this first tweet on New Year's. That really, you know, uh, wasn't something good to read, uh, what the American president was thinking about Pakistan. Now, sir, you believe that uh, this is the time, 2021 onwards. This decade is the decade of change in the region. This decade is the, is the decade of peace in the region. This decade is the decade of growth in the region sir do you see this or maybe it is just my own uh, fancy dream maybe well uh, you know uh, saying this that pakistan has to revisit its uh, foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis america or uh, the region etc frankly speaking you know that when it comes to foreign policy or foreign affairs it is not just one party's effort but also the response of the other, which matters. Now, peace, tranquility, and, uh, you know, prosperity, all fine, you see, but we are not living on clouds. You see, we have to come down and look at the realities on the ground, you know, that what's happening in Russia or the former Soviet Union and Eurasia, what is happening between China and India, what is happening, you see, in the Middle East, in the Gulf states, uh, and what is happening in Afghanistan is of key importance and key issue to us. You know, uh, my own view on all these issues is that deal with realities, even if these are very harsh, instead of going after, you see, your chasing ideals, you, which you may like, which are very desirable, but you may not be able to achieve, you know. Now, a classic case is relations between Iran and Pakistan. Pakistan has always tried to have good relations with Iran. But since the fall of Shah, you see the relations are not the same. And now it appears that even during the period of the Shah, the relations between Pakistan and Iran were underpinned by Santo. And once the Santo was no more there, you see the relations quality suffered. You know, in terms of... But, but Ambassador Saab, Khadek Saab, that is the part know, of history, we, sir. We, 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 I mean, we can talk about the 1947 the partition and, you know, things which we did wrong. We couldn't, you know. The, so now, talk about 2021. This post-Trump uh, era, sir. Let's talk about the, the new developments. Let's talk about the new competitions. There was a time when the Russians were uh, the rivals of the Americans and we used to hear about the Cold War. Now it's the Chinese. It's a different ball game altogether now, sir. Ah, yes, so, you know, frankly speaking, you know, Cold War never ended, you know, you, 
when it had ended and i was posted in kazakhstan and i asked a russian diplomat about the end of the cold war he said that cold war was not about containment of communism cold war was about containment of russia or cutting it to size you know it's a when in containment of russia cold war succeeded but in cutting it to size you see it is facing problems so you know cold war never ended in fact people who think that cold war ended is uh, you know is a bit bit of a you see the uh, optimism or optimism you know it is a continuation you know after the second world war it is a continuation you know continuation of you see conflicts from european theater you see the cause we conflicts were shifted to other theaters proxy wars instead of direct wars you know but wars nevertheless so you know it is these realities that we have to factor in in our you know f- formulation of foreign policy you know no matter what we wish you see how how you are going to do about the iranian arabs problems is there much that pakistan can do about it i'm sorry no you know it's uh, this this issue has been there for for uh, almost 1000 years how pakistan can do you about uh, go about it now you know what i'm trying to say is that everyone knows that in pakistan the center of gravity is the armed forces of pakistan and if pakistan militarily remains strong there is a chance of stability in the country as well inside the country as well and you know for pakistan you see to acquire its due clout where it can count far more than it is counting now pakistan has to develop its internal stability pakistan has to reorganize itself inside pakistan you know you cannot you know be sort of a, like a beggar and at the same time a chooser and all that you know no nothing of the sort so internally and economically and socially if we develop we will have far more clout than we have now you know now instead of this you know if we are thinking of having one ally and then another ally of course there is a reconfiguration of forces the reconfiguration is that earlier it was soviet union and china which fell out with each other and americans co-opted the chinese you know nixon to china and tilted the balance against soviet union now it is the other way around it is china and the soviet union which are kind of you know getting closer to right. each other of journey all right ambassador sir thank so, you so but, much but, for your for your for your comments to... now sir in the important area and that is about um, obviously when we talk about the new world order and so on and so forth and especially post covid situation uh, it has really you know i would say it has actually it was more or less like an earthquake i would say so so many people died all over the globe so many and the fear factor was so strong and so genuine also look at the number of deaths in america look at the number of deaths across europe for that matter over here i mean i think asia was comparatively much safer maybe because of the constraint or whatever now these were the mega challenges of the last year uh, we haven't heard much about new wars because um, donald trump did not you know uh, proved uh, for any other new war except for a few attacks maybe perhaps the mother of all bombs in afghanistan or some 100 missiles in syria for that matter but the basic idea was to withdraw and look inwards rather than looking outwards over here sir when you look at the democrats their approach has always been inwards as well as outwards i mean look at the number of people i mean in the recent past who were so committed and knew the area so well especially this area or china for that matter or or other issues now so when you talk about uh, people like hillary clinton for that matter she knows this area so well uh, or, or for that matter mr <coughs> barack obama uh, and then even if you go into the past you'll you'll get to know that 
these people really mastered uh, about the history and, and the dynamics of, of, of Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran. Now, so looking at the current situation in Iran, P5 plus 1 and its future, looking at uh, the overall philosophy of Pakistan, and historically, the Democrats have always had a tilt towards the Indians, and especially a lot of Indians are very happy that Kamala Harris is there. Maybe they're wrong because she seems to be a pretty neutral woman, especially when it comes to human rights. She's very aggressive on that front. What sort of a change, immediate change do you see? Because now he's just handling the very basics. I mean, COVID issue, uh, monetary issues, uh, for example, unemployment and so on and so forth. But slowly and surely he's going to debut his people and see what's going all over the world. Right. When we say uh, the change with Biden's administration, so uh, this is my assessment that uh, normally in America, we you know, many things, Americans, American policies are structural. Now, uh, the change of president des definitely means uh, that a person is coming and there's a personalized touch to tinge to what uh, will happen, you know, a particular president's time. But generally, the policies are somewhat same. And, uh, you know, the policies are, uh, there, there are a number of stakeholders uh, in formulating the policies like Pentagon and other political parties, Congress, and there's so many factors that, you know, formulate policies in America. Definitely, a pres like when we say Democrats have come, so they, they have, uh, you know, a viewpoint about certain issues. Now, Indians are very happy that Kamala Harris has an Indian uh, origin, and they're also happy because many of uh, the team members of uh, Biden's uh, also uh, come from Indian origins. So they're kind. But I think, uh, uh, like, uh, we, we expect some, some, you know, voice in uh, White House or in Vice President uh, Kamala Harris about human rights violation in Kashmir. Because the other issue that Americans, as a public opinion in America, is also you know very critical of what is happening in Kashmir. So you know the leaders in America, they are pushed, driven by the public opinion. That so have. people have been silenced most of the times. I mean, during the Trump era, most likely a few news newspapers, you know, primarily went against him. You know, in order to give their own point of view, but never, in fact, uh, supported Trump on that. No, I, I I say they will heed to some to some extent to what you know, public opinion about human rights is. But policies are going to be the same. Like, uh, they will have a tilt towards India. They will have a friction with China. And particularly when uh, post-COVID, the, during the COVID and post-COVID uh, scenario, you see China s seems to be winning this uh, COVID battle and America seems to be losing the battle. So this friction uh, on an international level will continue to be, be going on. And, uh, and Pakistan will also, you know, we, we will, all, will not see much different difference from what Trump uh, administration used to, you know, have look at Pakistan's uh, situation. I think it will con more or less uh, the continuation of the same. Continuation of the same. As you earlier mentioned that uh, the current government doesn't have uh, much to maneuver. Uh, now, a couple of points are here. Uh, PJ Mirsa, because it is also very important by looking into what is happening inside USA. Uh, after this particular election, you know, I've spoken to so many of my friends who are not Pakistanis, but Americans living there, but they were born there, and they, they feel very insecure. They feel that there is an absolute division and polarization in the U.S. society. And people are generally scared, scared not only in terms of um, being scared from the blacks or the Mexicans or others, but economic uh, uh, scare is there. Uh, you talk about health and now he's also reversing and working on the Obamacare. Let's see where it leads. People are concerned about that. People are really afraid of uh, COVID. People are, I mean, very uncertain uh, kind of a behavior because uncertainty unfortunately prevails out there at the maximum uh, after this particular election. Now what I'm saying is that sir, once you have this kind of a division within the American society and for example, uh, Afghanistan needs a certain amount of money from the U.S. taxpayers. Do you think that is going to be a doable proposition for them, sir? Or if not, that can also put a lot of pressure on the current administration to withdraw on ASAP basis. Well, Faisal, first of all, uh, not a lot of people know, but um, the Congress has put a lot of limitations on CIA funding and funding to countries like Pakistan and, of course, to Afghanistan and probably other countries as well. 
Why? Because uh, obviously the funding which has been given to the countries, uh, they haven't been utilized properly. And uh, that is one of the reasons the senators, they cry out, as you would have seen them, uh, you know, them in the uh, Congress and Senate ranting away. Now, this is the reason what we need to be doing when we speak about our own situation. Uh, if you remember, before our prime minister went to the United States, what kind of an attitude and, um, you know, the, 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 the connotations which were coming out uh, uh, via uh, President Trump? We were deceitful. We were cheats. We were dishonest. And the moment our prime minister goes and explains, including the Islamophobia factor, all of a sudden the situation changes. Now, this is Pakistan's biggest problem. I do remember when the nuclear blast took, uh, took over and Prime Minister Navashri went into uh, London, his people couldn't even converse with the counterparts. Now, when you don't have qualified people who cannot speak the language, who cannot speak you know, one to one, eye to eye, well, that's where you lose your immediate case. Now, this is the kind of a thing which we need to be, uh, again, addressing. Our, 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 uh, let's say our communication gap is horrible. It's horrible. I've seen only one prime minister, apart from, of course, I didn't go on this one. Uh, Mr. Shokat Aziz went there. He was speaking eye to eye with the top of the top blue chip company, you know, uh, owners. Now, that created an impact. Hey, there is Pakistan. Now, these are the facts which we, which we really need to be addressing into. Our lobby, as I said earlier, uh, Faisal, it is very poor. India is far superior to us in this, and we need to be countering it. What we have done is gone on the defensive and penny wise and pound foolish, whereas they have gone on and their people have gone on into the, con into the Congress, into the Senate, and being part of it. Our diaspora only remains sort of embedded in the British Parliament. We need to be you know, encouraging people to get into international politics rather than speaking again back to Pakistan, back to the States and so on forth. We can't. I mean, Kamala Harris is, 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 a, is a prime example. You know, India, Guyana, and of course, there now she's the vice president. And what a change in the American politics. The first ever uh, woman to come, uh, you know, to that pivoted um, slot. So what we have to do here today, look, Pakistan is going to stay, period. But you, me, ambassadors and others will come and go. We need to be talking long term. We don't have a long term plan. We've got to be working on long term and long term plan means a, a, a creating a dialogue, not a monologue. So I think that, that these are the areas which need to be addressed. And as far as, uh, you know, this uh, uh, this uh, Kashmir issue is concerned, believe me, I say through your program, we've had the three best centers in Brussels, in London, and of course, in Washington, Washington, there was a four poor, but we were pleading our case and we were there. We were literally there. We were getting 42 to 48 members of the European Parliament listening to us here. Who's, who's listening to us? Apart from India monitoring, no one is listening to us. And there they go out and counter us on the international podium. In Geneva, we go and present a case. India is standing right up there. So these are the factors which we need to be addressing. And we cannot be India centric. If India is friendly with UAE, Saudi Arabia or let any other be, country, exactly. well, let it be. That is their yeah. friendship. We need to be establishing our own friendships with different countries rather than we just focus, uh, you know, on India centric uh, sort of policies. We've got to very get well out said, of this. Very well said, Mirza. I think it is high time to look inward and, you know, sort out our own policies first. <laughs> sort our own house in order and then you know then we can always talk about it but Mir sahab was a pleasure having you sir thank you so much for your time and Dr. sahab always great to have you sir thank you so much for your time as well and that's all we have uh, for this sir. inshallah i'll see you again uh, till then you take good care of yourself khuda hafiz